Welcome to the ATP Project. You're with your host Matt and Jeff, and today we have with us in Lake Tahoe special guest Eric Burns from EricBurns.com and uh, the Daily Hustle uh, podcast. Yeah, man. Mate, nice to, to to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you guys. I got to tell you, I've always gotten along really well with Australian dudes. Yep. So. Long story short, for I mean anyone who's listening or watching this, basically, I played 11 years of professional baseball. Yeah, and uh, Australians, for whatever reason, like to some of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. Wow, uh -huh. Ryan Roland Smith with the Seattle Mariners. Right, yeah. uh, played with him there. Trent Olchin uh, with the Arizona Diamondbacks. So, wow. yeah, I mean just a, a, a Travis Blackley as well. I mean, there's some really good dudes, man. And 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 uh, what were you doing when you're you're you a pitcher or were you? So I was an outfielder. Right, an outfielder. Right. Outfielder. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's cool to see baseball grow. Yeah. And, and I'm not sure how much you guys actually get to see it in Australia. Yeah. But I know these guys, all, all of them have, you know, especially um, Ryan and I know Trent has, has done a lot of work with it. And I believe Travis has as well. But, you know, these guys all play in the big leagues, right? Right. The highest level of baseball. And now here they are and they're working with these youth teams. Right. These youth Australian teams. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's exactly what you need yeah. right. in yeah. order to get the sport to grow. Yeah. You know, amongst obviously um, a country that, where baseball's not no, the number one it's, sport. No, it's not. It's cricket. I mean, mm. like, you know, in terms of the summer. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. And some of those names that you've mentioned as well, too, it's disgraceful that they're not household names in Australia because obviously they're playing at the highest echelon of baseball in the United States. But if you ask yeah. probably nine out of ten Australians, they don't know them, which is a travesty. Yeah. It's interesting because I think Australians are a lot like us, right? right? Yeah. Like, a lot like Americans do. Like, what's in front of us yeah. yeah right it's what we know yeah and yeah. so when you guys go ahead and we're several thousand miles away playing a game that's foreign to you yeah that doesn't give you reason to get involved even yeah. if it, mm. one of your neighbors is actually there doing it and, yeah. it's, and it's a pretty big deal whereas yeah. Yeah. i think in some other countries you know especially latin america this is baseball's the number one sport so right. they're going if you they know this is the highest level of baseball being yeah. played in the united states yeah. that's what we're going to follow same sort of thing in japan now japan they get to watch yeah. baseball there yeah now if you guys had a professional league that was over the top and you got into it then mm. then you would pay attention of what's going on in america but because it's not in front of us, it's like, dude, I'm gonna go hiking, I'm gonna go swimming, I'm gonna go running, I'm gonna do other shit. I'm yeah. not like, why do I need to pay attention to that? Yeah, yeah, I'll pay yeah. attention to everything that's going on here, and maybe it's cricket or, um, you know, football, whatever else. We so, need an Australian team in the World Series. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, so I think you guys have a chance. Yeah. I, of getting an Australian team right? in the Olympics. Yeah, yeah for right. 2020. Yeah, yeah. Right now, I. I got to talk to these guys, see where it is, because I know the qualifiers, I believe, were this summer. Yeah, okay. So I'm not sure if you guys qualified or not. Right. Interesting to see. We should yeah, look yeah. into that. It's crazy. But then we have the World Baseball Classic every couple years. Yeah. Uh, every four years, actually. Yeah. Uh, and they implemented that when Olympics originally had dropped baseball, and Australia always has a team in that. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so how did you get into baseball? How long did you play for? And then what's happened to you since you've retired, and, and what are you doing now? Yeah, so basically... You know, long story short here, um, grew up in San Francisco, uh, went to college at UCLA, signed with the Oakland A's originally. Yeah. You guys ever see the movie Moneyball? Yeah, 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 yeah I did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. So but that was with Brad Pitt, right? With Brad Pitt. Yeah. yeah. Now, I am in the movie, and I'm at the very beginning of the movie. That was my team, the 2002 yeah. Oakland A's. Wow. Oh, wow. And so we... The big story was that we won 20 consecutive games, yeah, right, which wow. at the time was a modern-day baseball record. Yeah. Um, and the movie was all about, you know, basically thinking outside of the box yeah. when you go to compile a team. Yeah. Um, so I'm at the very beginning of the movie, I strike out. Yeah. And then <laughs> at the climax of the movie, right, the, the, the pinnacle, uh, I get pinch hit for. Meaning it's like, hey, Burns, grab a seat. Go, you're on the uh, bench. And this uh, other guy's going to hit for you. Yeah. And right. Scott Hatterberg was like the hero of the movie. Yeah. yeah. He hits the game winning home run in wow. the oh. 20th game. But the one thing I'll say that, I'm most proud of is that when you get pinch hit for, usually most guys are like, oh man, like, yeah, I want to be playing. I should yeah. have been in there. Yeah. And also, real footage in the movie is me like on top of the dog pile yeah, at right. the end. And yeah. It was, yeah. That's awesome. It's it's cool because yeah. when you do something like that, you go on like this crazy run for a team. Yeah. For, for a team. team. Yeah, yeah, man. And 
nobody cares about what anyone's doing individually. Yeah, that's right. right. All of a sudden, none of that Ego shit dropped, it's all about dropped. soul. Then. Yeah. And so it's bigger than you, right? Mm. Way, way bigger than yeah. you. Way and that gives you way more gratification. And it's funny because exactly. we, we talk a lot about why. Why, why people do things and, and what inspires people and what motivates people. And, and typically, I find talking to people is that, that, that desires and accolades and motives that are bigger than themselves always seem to have the most profound impact on the world and people attain far more higher uh, altitudes than what they were doing if they were just solely focused on their own own self if that makes sense you know yeah there, so, the, so. there's there's been so many times in my life when i've had these selfish motives i've had yeah. it, and it's, it's it's you're doing things for the wrong reason and i think what I've gotten good as I've gotten older is realizing that, look, because even when you do have that success and, and, and you have this sort of single tracked mind of, man, I just want to, I want to do this for me. You realize like that doesn't, it's not fulfilling. Yeah. Like what's fulfilling is, 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 is ripping through a Spartan course with your freaking best friend on your hip and, and, yeah. and going through different sorts of things. Like, like what's fulfilling is, is, carrying other people to, to yep. find their next level, which ultimately, guess what? That's going to push you yeah. Yeah. to your next level. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I mean, that's obviously... Well, I was going to ask that. that so. that's I was going to ask that because you, we, with your team sport and all that team stuff you're talking, and then after that you did ultra marathons and a, little, a lot of solo endurance stuff, but you're telling me it wasn't so solo. Like, there's you're still a team that's right. element to that's it. That's right. Absolutely. Very, very much yeah. so. So I, I got into doing triathlons, and if you think there's any correlation between baseball and triathlon you're fucking crazy there's right. not there's yeah. nothing yeah. it's like i went from a totally anaerobic sport yeah. to a 100 percent aerobic sport yeah and got my ass kicked in in uh first few triathlons i did i almost drowned in the water i was i was riding a beach cruiser as my bike um i had three friends introduced me to the sport and the first race that i did i, I crossed the finish line and you know i was getting passed by 16 year old girls on the bike i remember because they had the calf the age on the calf right, right. so you can see yeah. it and i got done and i looked at my friends i said this the greatest experience of my life and thank you guys so much and i also said and they all they all beat me i said it's the last time you'll ever beat me <laughs> yeah. so yeah. i went out i got a triathlon bike just kind of went all in on the sport and 11 months later did my first iron man and then in a like a seven year period um did 11 Ironmans, wow. um, got into doing the ultra marathons, yeah. uh, did the Western States 100, which actually starts right here. Right. Uh, it's a 100 mile run, 22,000 feet of descent. It's like 19,000 feet of gain. Wow. Um, one of the most grueling, difficult man. ones and yeah. grueling ones in, in the world. Uh, and then basically got into kind of doing these crazy other endurance events last summer. Um, did a triathlon across the country. But, you know, even with that thing, like you said, like, individually right like yeah. if i if i focused on okay this is just about me and the swimming biking and running i would have never made it i would yeah. not like, we were biking 100 150 miles a day running 30 to 40 a day miserable yeah right yeah. fucking miserable but my boy kowalski who he's gonna come up here in a minute yeah. but basically dude to have him by my side every day to have my wife and my kids and the family there yeah and then we had this grander purpose of yeah. of Really, we started this foundation called Let, Let Them Play. Yeah. And it's all about getting kids outside, youth activity. It's at an all-time low right now. Right. 60% of kids do zero after-school youth activity in the United States. Wow. Uh, wow. Kids are spending seven to nine hours a day on screens. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, participation in, in, in youth sports has become so economical now yeah. because it's become so expensive. Yeah, that's a really good point, That actually. a lot of kids are getting left in the dark. And yeah. then the other thing is... 97% of schools have gotten rid of everyday PE. So yeah. physical wow. education, right? Which is like what how, saved yeah. me as a kid. How, how much is this, gone? How much do you, uh, of this do you think is about the political correct, correctness aspect coming in as well too? Because obviously, and I've heard this as well too. There's a lot of um, people now that saying, "Oh well, they're they're not the athletic type. They're not." So no, no, you can go read a book instead of actually go and participate because um, so, some aspects of the community are saying it devalues their self worth. Now I disagree with that, but this is where, if you like, some of the bleeding hearts are coming in, and I think. 
they they might be doing it for the right motive, but the impact is having a lifelong impact on the health of the kids, right? Yeah. yeah. So so we we need to sort of challenge that that mentality where they're yep. coming in and they're trying to save people from difficult situations or from testing themselves. We actually need to say no, no, no. That's actually a part of life. You can't wrap yourself in cotton wool. You know, if mm. you if you chick the little chick that's coming out of the egg, you, you go, oh, let's help the chick by 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 breaking open the egg and helping it out. Chick dies because it doesn't build up any strength, right? Yeah. And this is what I'm afraid of, especially with the youth now is that we're trying to wrap them in cotton wool and protect them from all harm yep. and, and and by doing so we're actually setting them up for failure prepare the child for the road not the road for the child yes yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like, a good yes. saying that, that, that road's not changing yeah. it hasn't changed for any one of us yeah. Yeah. we're gonna hit the bumps in the road yeah, we're gonna exactly. have, you know we're gonna hit roadblocks this shit's gonna happen along the way through the course of our life yeah. and if we try to bubble wrap all our kids yeah uh uh-uh, uh yeah right yeah and, like it's you know the gift of failure, the the the, the gift of of, of a, a bloody knee, just all, like anything. Like as much as you know, and, and I have three kids, an eight, nine, and ten year old. As much as I want to be overbearing and protective and everything, uh, uh-uh. uh. Yeah. That, that's that's not it. So yeah, I I just think with with kids right now, you know, the biggest thing is is that you know we have. We have to make them understand. And for a long time, it was like, okay, oh, yeah, athletes are going to be athletes, and they're going to go out and play and whatever. But you got to make them understand, like, it's not about. And even with all the endurance stuff that I do, yeah. this isn't about hundred mile races. This isn't about doing an ultra beast Spartan race. This isn't about uh, anything but moving. Yeah, putting mm. one foot in front of the other, mm. and yeah. making people understand, kids and adults alike, yeah. Yeah. Mm. that the only thing that we have to do, just go. Yeah. yeah, it's the start that stops us all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, right? yeah. progress, not perfection, right? Oh. Like just start, just give yeah. it a just start. Just yeah. think about your day in the morning. Like you roll out of the rack, or it's like you know, maybe that a few too many freaking cocktails the night before. You're like, sure. Damn, I feel like shit. Whatever. Yeah, and next thing you know, like. You just get mo- moving, and then now we're mm-hmm. going. And, you know, now you're out. You, you know, I had your coffee, and, and, and now you're running. You're like, okay, like we could do this. Yeah, yeah. But but each and every single day, you got to start. Yeah, yeah. And with the problem with exercise and in, in, in activity with so many people, is that they don't ever start. Yeah. Because it, because they're they're embarrassed, and it's just like no, like start with a mile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like make make that a goal. Like every single day, whether I walk, run, or crawl. Yeah. yeah I'm I'm get my fucking mile in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I well, saw I, I saw one of your daily hustle podcasts when you were talking about get outside, feel the sunshine, yeah. feel the air, yeah. notice the color, yeah. the fragrance. Now, there's a lot of other motivating factors to get people outside other than exercise and intensity with that sort of thing sometimes just having another motivation to get people outside and just a different perspective so they're not there thinking oh i'm actually slower than the next person or i'm not performing or i wonder if people can see me not performing well or something because if you're focused on something beautiful and something positive and you're taking something amazing out of it it leaves less space for the for the fear or the resentment or that yeah. that self you know well Tom, thomas jefferson and, i mean this is way back hmm. when said one of the best things that you can do for your brain to improve cognitive thought and and to improve thinking and the ability mm. to overcome obstacles and all the rest of it was take a half hour walk every morning yeah but right? this yeah. is thomas jefferson way back when right yeah and we know now that actually that improves the 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 the, the waves in the brain oh, and the way yeah. that you actually process things like, yeah like you, sure you can be as book smart and all the rest of it but if you're not looking after the physical body the one thing that we've got right and we've all got one if you're not yeah. looking after that and you're only looking after the mind that's inside it you're actually hampering your ability to be actually improved if you, if you consider that it's potential 2 million points of data that I don't know about these numbers but there's about 2 million points of data I do num- know that 80% of the stats are made up on the spot but um, there's out of about 2 million points of data we pick up on about 7 now if yeah. you're there with social media if you're there picking up on this sort of stuff it's your choice to take those sort of things in or you can focus your attention elsewhere and yeah. that's where I reckon the exercise and getting outside and getting in back in touch with nature because a lot of people they don't even understand nature. They're, no. that, they're, that, they're that separated from what you're saying. No. Seven to nine hours of screen time is a crazy it's a joke. time. Yeah. It's a joke. So, so that's why. So when we went across the country, you know, our whole thing and the problem in the United States is that it's lack of funding. Right. That's a big issue. So yeah. they're cutting funding to public education. Mm. So the first thing to go is PE, art, and wow. music. Yeah. Oh, those wow. are culture. Those are the, those are the, the culture three fucking world. things we yeah. need. Yeah. 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 We yeah. have yeah. to give yeah. our kids yeah. to yeah. survive. Calculators for the rest. Well, so, that, that's so yeah. funny in Australia as well too. We're noticing the same thing where there is so like my, my, my kid's going to prep, which is before grade one, and he's getting to to do uh, like charts and tables oh, and homework, and it's like, yeah. oh my gosh, it's like when does a kid learn play based learning and yeah. about experiencing and developing 
other areas of the of mm. the of the brain yeah. that is not about study and academia yeah. because that's just one thing and they're so focused on this one area but you know we're seeing montessori which is counterculture to that which is all play-based learning and you're seeing e even some of the, the 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 smartest ceos and executives said that they they um uh, believe that the reason that they were able to think differently, think outside the box, uh, was because they went to Montessori or they had play-based learning for a long time. We mm. need kids to be kids, well, and playing is part of that. Yeah. You, you put kids into a room, they're going to pick up boxes, they're going to you know, have imaginary make-believe play. That's Creativity. so important, but yet we're, tr we're, we're getting away from that. Yeah. Yeah, something my, oh, this is probably embarrassing to say, but recently my teacher called me up to say that one of my sons is dyslexic. Okay, um, so I went into the school to say, show me, show me I was dyslexic because at home he's not. And so, he, yeah, but fair enough. Halfway through, he started flipping all of his letters. So I said, quick, get up, do the star jumps, do the marching we do, cross crawl. And he's straight back down, perfect. I said to the teachers, I said, he's not dyslexic, he's uncoordinated. Yep. I said, he's just growing, he's not getting enough movement, we're going to get him into the gymnastics, we've got all this sort of stuff happening, this is what you got to do. And now, no one went back to the school and the same thing. Um, the teacher got everyone up and then taught the, the techniques that I showed the teacher and all of his letters were in the right. But when they're young, their brains fatigue quite easily, their attention span doesn't last, they need to get up and move. And that's what being a child's about and learning those sort of things. And you'll learn more of that through PE, art and um, drama and dance and they're, than they're, you will from anything. They're else. trying to figure out if my kid's dyslexic right now. Yeah. Right. And the same thing because yeah. I read with them at home yeah. Yeah. and he's, he's do, fine. He, does, he does fine. Exactly. Yeah. And, it's, and look, he's not he's not a great reader by any means and he's yeah. eight and he's in second grade yeah. but he's, he's getting through it oh. and then, and it's funny because they don't want to call him dyslexic yet. They, they said oh, they yeah. want to have this quote unquote some sort of intervention to figure out yeah. more. Yeah. And I'm because they're like verbally he does great and he's you know, super smart yeah 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 and then yet he's slower on this and it just gets me thinking because you're yeah. right it's like when we're fully not developed and it's funny because dyslexia was back in the day it was so rarely yeah. ever diagnosed sure. right and then you know there were people that were left that who really had it bad were left on the outside because they, they couldn't fucking read yeah yeah, right? yeah 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 but now it's like ADHD or something like. The overdiagnosis of this stuff. Look, yeah. we all have ADHD. Of course, we all yeah. have. It. You know, sometimes yeah. I don't have ADHD. I'm just an asshole. Yeah. Right. Sometimes, <laughs> so, yeah. sometimes it was, we yeah. get we all get in our own little worlds, and it's funny yeah. because I got diagnosed growing up full blown ADHD. Now yeah. I probably did have it. Right. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I also noticed, and the teacher showed this right away, is they put me outside. They gave me an IQ test, and. Bombed it. Like, could I, I remember sitting in the room, looking outside, watching all my friends play football, pouring down rain. I'm thinking, all I want to do is be out there. Yeah. I was tired. I was yeah. hungry. Wanted nothing to do with the test. Yeah, exactly. Rip yeah. through it. Yeah. The teacher, the the administrators at the school want to send me to a school for special, special education kids. kids. Yeah. Mm. The the psychologist who gave me the test says, Nah, I want to give them the test right after lunchtime, right after exercise, a week later, yep. gives yeah. me the same test. Yeah. I swore in the 98th percentile yeah, of yeah, all yeah. nine-year-olds. Well, the exact same thing there happened no to my brain. son as well too. Exactly Brody, the man. same. They mm. gave him a test when he was tired. It was end of term. Yep. He was grumpy. He was hungry. It, he, it was at the end of the week, at the end of term. And you know what kids get at yeah. the that. He was yeah. just, he was over it. We see it right? every day at yeah. the end of the day, right? Yeah. Yeah. At some point, our kids are going to melt down. Yeah. Yeah. Almost every single day. Yep. Yeah. And so we know this happens. So and we also know we all go through you know lulls yeah. and highs through the course of the day yeah. and if you hit them at the wrong spot they're not going to perform yeah, so yeah. my my entire point to this and this is showing we there's a documentary made that's coming out uh early next this year this is your documentary it's it is it's yeah. it's called let them play a triathlon across america right and really it follows a journey uh it was a seven mile swim across the san francisco bay uh a 2400 mile bike from uh, Oakland to Chicago and then a 905 five mile run Whoa. from <laughs> Chicago to New York City uh, kilometers I can't really do the translation yeah, 1600 your yeah, Australian yeah, 1500, teams, but yeah. I didn't do math yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but along the way um, we stopped in these schools and we handed out these checks to, to physical education programs we handed out checks to different youth activity programs uh, that just promoted play in this whole idea in one of the schools that we went to uh, I was, I actually did not go to this school. It was in Pagosa, Colorado. But the guy who shot the documentary, uh, Eric Cochran and Tycooley Productions, goes into this school and does this whole thing 
on what movement has done for their kids, what movement has done for their test scores. And it's crazy, yeah. crazy. So now they took this focus study group that they had exercising every day just for like 20 minutes. Yep. This isn't long, 20 minutes of exercise before school. All those kids improved like 100% more than all the other kids in the school. Which So this was a control group. So now they implement this preschool exercise yep. for all of the kids. And the school went from being like way down in, in percentile of where their test scores compared to all the other schools in the nation to to like not only like well above average. Yep. Wow. And just to think it is through activity, yet here we are, we're cutting the funding for yeah. this. Wow. So, and I think well, it's because it's not important, but we're learning uh, that that's the most important. Actually, there's a book, um, How to Think Like Leonardo da Vinci. And it tells a story about Leonardo da Vinci, how people used to turn up to watch him walk in the morning. His symmetry was so perfect. And everything he did was all about symmetry. It's about being symmetrical with your movements and being ambidextrous with your hands. So that way you can use left and right brain effectively. And I mean, as Leonardo da Vinci, the greatest Renaissance yeah. man of all time. And now they think, right? Art, I mean, this guy's art, like a, ro a, a ro rocket scientist, yeah, uh, yeah. A, a, a poet. Uh, I mean, artist, it's just artist, like, yeah. like everything you could think but of. Physically, was amazing. Apparently, too, like it, symmetrically amazing. Crazy yeah. athlete, like yeah. all of it. He's, yeah. he's, he is. It's funny you mentioned da Vinci because yeah. the daily hustles I, I tell you guys about. So I, I write it's a blog where <clears throat> basically I send out in the morning to anyone who subscribes to the email list. And then I back it up with the Daily Hustle podcast and everything else. But I've written several Daily Hustles on Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. And the whole concept and idea and really the message that I hone in on that is be a renaissance man. Be, like, don't yeah. think that this is, I'm just a left brain person or I'm just a right brain person. Yeah. No. I'm yeah. a Vitruvian man. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Use it all. Like, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. here. Like, this is... Yeah. As far as we know, we get one shot at the sink called life. Like, Absolutely. live it. If yeah. you're going to live it, you can't alienate and let society tell you what you can and can't do. Yeah. And just, yeah. you go and do it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that, and that's true. And, and the funny thing was is that, uh, and looking at the body holistically as well too, and it sort of ties in a little bit with what you're saying as well. Jamie Oliver, um, a few years ago, went into the English... Um, the English chef. Yeah, mm. and he went into the English schools, and he went through and he had a look at their lunches, and I forget exactly the numbers, but I think they were spending like 20 p pence, which is like you know 25 cents, you know 30 cents kid. on their lunch per kid, right? It was absolutely horrible, and the amount of preservatives, the amount of sugar, the lack of nutrients that they were yeah. getting was absolutely horrendous. Mm. He went in, and I think he increased... Uh, the, the amount that they were spending to like 75 pence or something mm. like that. But he said the difference in terms of fresh vegetables, quality ingredients and all the rest of it. And exactly the same thing that you said with regards to the exercise, they started noticing in terms of behavioral you know, yep. problems and detentions and you know, the, the, the test scores went up. So imagine if we were to take information like what you've got and then the information that Jamie's got, mm. and we actually put it together, and because you know yeah. we're, we're so many parts, we're, we're physical, we, we we need the food, we need the exercise, we mm. need all of these sorts of things together. Look at the Swiss um, schools as well too, in terms of they have all play-based learning up until the age of seven. They do no homework mm. whatsoever. There is there is not even school as we would understand it, but yet they've got the highest amount of people entering universities, like. Their schooling system, in terms of you know graduates and all the rest of it, is inverse to America and to Australia. Like in terms of the, the quality, we need to flip the system on its head. Yeah. We mm -hmm. really do, and we need to get back to nurture. You know the physical aspects, the the, the nutritional aspects, you know the learning aspects that we've got. Because you imagine these these things converging all together. Yeah. We, we're going to yeah. get back and have unbelievable results with our children. Which and is, in Australia, you know, some of the highly most uh, highly funded schools are the ones that are cutting all those programs and doing the most in intense learning mm -hmm. you know like your pie graphs your children oh, are doing blows my mind <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so in terms then of um uh you know obviously you're, you're passionate about kids uh, so who, what do you what is your 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 clientele that's listening to you what is the message that you're trying to get out there and, and, and what do you what do you want to do to change the world well, i mean I, I appreciate you've just done a documentary <laughs> so so mm. you, you are you're changing the world but i mean is, is, it, is it all about the kids for you at the moment or is it about is it about a broader demographic as well you know what it's funny because i, I think it starts with the kids so yes mm. and it starts with my own kids. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's this selfishness uh, in me. Yeah. Um, but then it's funny because I obviously played professional baseball. Yeah. Mm. And so I'm going to use this example. Uh, my eight year old loves baseball. Just can't get enough of it. Right. Yeah. And I haven't coached any of his little league teams and I've kind of stayed out of it. And, you know, it's been fun to watch him develop into his thing. Um, and 
I know that my kid mm. is going to get the coaching from me. Yeah, so good. every spare minute that I have, him and I are out working, we're doing things, good. and I'm teaching him the game what I consider the right way. Yeah. Mm. And just recently, it kind of dawned upon me. And I'm like, you know what? I've worked my whole life acquiring knowledge and wisdom within baseball and within life as well. Mm. And obviously this ultra endurance sports thing has taught me a lot. Um, why not share it? Yes. Why not share it beyond just my kids? That's, that's selfish of me just to mm. think, hey, this is it. This is who I need to take care of. No, mm. let, me, let me spread some of this love to the other kids. So I actually got together. My cousin played professional baseball as well. Uh, one of my best friends who lives in Florida played several years in the big leagues. It was a World Series MVP. Wow. Have another buddy who's in San Diego I played college baseball with. And we all have kids the same age. So we put together a team like this yeah. kind of national travel team. Right. And then we got these other kids, just kind of random other kids, mainly, we recruited parents more than kids. We didn't recruit the best players. Right. Yeah. We recruited like good people. Yeah. And now like this opportunity that like in practices even, just to share this knowledge and wisdom with these kids yeah. and, to, and, to, and to, see it, to see them take it in. And as, as much as I love coaching my own kid, and of course he's my favorite, he's my kid. Yeah there's nothing more rewarding than than seeing what I told another kid mm. right and yeah. see him apply it yeah. and see it work yeah so in life like for example like and even the whole let them play message and and getting outside what activity does for the brain and to see the kids rally around that and, and to see them get out there and so when I go into schools and lead these PE classes like they get pumped and it's really fun and it's really cool right yeah but guess what the same shit applies for all the parents too, yeah. well, right? If it's, was, it's all of it applies to the teachers. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, you know, I was just about to say. I mean, I'm not professional anything, right? And my son got passionate about soccer, which I did not like. I played rugby all my life. In fact, in New Zealand, we you know, rugby is like that's church, right? It's sure. Like, right. But my son loved football. I knew nothing about it. I learned. I played. I learned how the rules by playing a video game called FIFA. Right? Like yeah. I knew nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I became the coach. And I tell you what. My son absolutely loved it because I was there coaching him mm. and all the other kids. And what, what I got out of it was 10 times more ten than I think what they got, mm. man. I mean, and I'm starting to learn that. Yeah. Uh, I'm okay. starting to learn that. Even with the daily hustle, like mm. passing these messages on. Yeah. Like, and, and when I write these things, and then when I go on my rants on the podcast and everything else, like, I, yeah, I, uh, there are people getting, and the reaction has been unbelievable, and I'm very thankful, and it's what drives me and keeps me going from the, from the people. But I know. Like, this is reminding me, all the messages that I'm trying to send out, no matter what it is, yeah. like, these are constant reminders. Mm. And the thing is, like, and the reason, one of the reasons why I do this daily, if we're not up to date, if we're, if, if all the things in my life, like, that mean anything to me, I do on a daily basis, yeah. right? It, like, everything. And so even the stuff that I follow, the daily stoic, um, you know, there's a daily devotional that I'll read. Uh, there, there, there's, uh, there's an, another, another dude's blog that I, I'm, I'm, I'm all over. Ryan Holiday, who wrote, uh, "Enemy, uh, Ego is the Enemy, Obstacles Away," has a new book. Stillness is the key. Yeah. Like he, he just, and I, him and I email back and forth, and I get a lot of really good material from him, and, yeah. and, and expand upon it and stuff. But this isn't whether it's sto like stoic philosophy and a lot of people will be like, well, stoic philosophy, you think a bunch of freaking old dudes and you know what it means. But basically there's two things. Amor fati, right? Right. It means love your fate. Right. Love everything that happens to you no matter what. Like, yeah. We yeah. can't control the things that happen to us. That's right. But we can control how our we reaction. respond. Yeah, and absolutely. And our reaction is everything. Our yeah. reaction setting us up yeah, yeah. for the rest of our life. Our reaction is setting us up for the next thing that's going to happen to you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, of course. So, so we have an ability, literally, I mean, you, you know that day when you get out of bed and you stub your toe and it's like, oh, I stubbed my toe. And next thing mm. you know, you spill the coffee and it goes on and on and on and on and yeah. on. You wonder yeah. fucking why. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and, yeah. and you keep, well, I'm just having a terrible day. And so <laughs> that's a real big thing. And then the other thing is for Stoic philosophy that's really infiltrated my life that we champion a lot on the Daily Hustle and talk about a lot is memento mori. It means we all will die. Right. And I don't say that to 
be morbid. I don't say that to freak you guys out. I say that so we could sit here and look at the fucking mountain up there yeah. and be like, damn, man, that's KT22. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go get some skis and charge that bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Absolutely. Like, like to get yeah. excited about To, to, li- to yeah. live life. To live life. Just and, live it. And, and, and I forget the saying, but it's, it, you know, we'll carpe diem, but like in terms of you get one life and you want to live life sincerely, which means without wax, which, out, mm. which means that you want to embrace life. As you say, you get one life. You mm. w- sit there moping around saying, poor me. You're just going to create a reality of misery, and then you're going to die. Yeah, you know, man. well, what does that live? And what do you do to serve anybody else? How do you impact anybody else's life by sitting there focused on yourself? And and what I was trying to say before is that I'm not a professional athlete, but I know that I can obviously get out there, and, and I want to encourage other parents, and even if you're not a parent, it, 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 to get involved with and and help kids and and lead kids because when you start uh, sewing into other people's lives. It sharpens you so much more because I've got to be that much better. I've got to watch myself. I've got to improve myself as well too if I'm going to be out there improving other people. And we're all busy. Yeah. But you know, I mean, especially yourself as well too. You could have gone. You know what? I've done it. I've 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 made my money. I've retired. I'm just going to kick back and I'm just going to relax and focus on myself. My dad told me there's two things that he could give me that nobody can ever take away. The first is educa- education. The second's experience. Yeah. And so, my entire life, like. And especially when I've had kids, like the whole thing I think about every single day is education experience. And he passed away unexpectedly right after I got done playing baseball. Mm-hmm. And it hit me. I mean, at that point, I actually I started writing down like a bunch of things. And that's how I really got into the writing and ended up writing a book called The, the Effort List. Life Lessons from a Human Crash Test Dummy, which was my yeah. nickname when I played baseball. Yeah, right. So I'd just fly all over the field and whatever. And, and, but then when I had all these compilations of stories and stuff, I'm like, you know what? I, I want to, these are all experiences, right? Mm. And I want to, if, if someone's ever going to read this and pick this up to read, like, why are they going to read this? What value would you guys get out of picking it up and, and going through these stories and stuff? And so I drew out these life lessons. And that's kind of where all of this, started you know from there it was the daily hustle podcast and the daily blogs and everything else but my whole thing in life each and every single day when i get up is experience man education experience education experience every single day to the kids education experience education experience because so long as we're doing that on a daily basis we're growing yeah yeah Yeah. and that's all we could ask for right just each and every day like be a better person like whatever it is and it's it's a struggle yeah. I'm yeah. far from perfect. Of course. But at least I could I can say that my vision is right. Yeah. Um oh, but man, it's a matter it's a matter of doing it. If you you wait for perfection, no one's gonna do anything ever. No, right? No, you just no. gotta use what you've got, get in there and, and start. So mm-hmm. we've got to wrap this up, yeah. which is a shame because I'm really enjoying this more, conversation. Though. Yeah, we can well, always absolutely. do these over Zoom. But we'd um, love to. Ma- one final thing that you want to say, you know, to, to the people, uh, you know, again, g- give those um, your, your, your podcast and everything a, a bit of a blog, uh, a bit of a, yeah. a, a bit of a pump. So where, where can people so, learn more about what you believe and what you're doing? I'd say the, probably the best way is to go to ericburns.com, E-R-I-C-B-Y-R-N-E-S.com. On the front page there, you can sign up for the, the Daily Hustle. It's yeah. a, the newsletter that comes in your inbox. Try it for a week. Yeah. If you think it sucks, click unsubscribe, t- take off, I don't care. Now, when you click on the Daily Hustles and stuff, basically th- there'll be a link to the podcast so you can listen to it too. Yeah. Where typically, yours are intense, right? Like they're they can, five, they can, they can yeah. five minute downloads of just boom. <laughs> that's, where you, that's where you get more of this. Yeah. That's where yeah. you get more of the free flow yeah. uh, off of the podcast. So what I do is I read it, and then after I read it, I read it with my own inflections. I just go off. They're three to seven minutes a day. Yeah, that's cool. That's it. Hmm. Um, and then we have this, um, I have the book, which is available on the website as well. Uh, and then the other thing is, is this documentary. Now, there is a documentary that we shot here uh, at the Western States. It's called Diamond to the Rough. That's already out. That's on Vimeo. It's on Apple TV or um, on on. Uh, iTunes. Right. Uh, they could, people could see that diamond to the rough. Right. Um, and it's all about playing baseball yeah. and transitioning to uh, ultra endurance sports. Right. And really, the focus in, in it's like, what value am I giving people for watching this? Other than, hey, man, this is a baseball player that's now running. It's all about transitions in life. Yeah. And it's yeah. all about figuring out. Look, at some point, whatever we do, it's it's going to end. Yeah. And where are you going to go from there? Yeah. And so I think. That, it's, that won some awards and has a really good message. Now, this new documentary is done, complete. 
that this is going to be called Let Them Play, a triathlon across America. Uh, stay updated on the website to when it's coming out. We've done two showings already. We have a third one coming up in Nashville, Tennessee. If there's anyone in Nashville, Tennessee, October 10th, free, 100% free. And this is a, a, a huge message that's getting sent with this documentary. I think it has the, it has the ability to change some lives and to yeah, change cool. Uh, the political landscape yeah, when it comes to cutting cutting physical education. So yeah. there's kind of all of it in a nutshell a little bit. I know it's a lot, um, but I really yeah, appreciate you guys having me on. Oh, oh it's been fantastic to have you. Fun. Really enjoyed it. Well, thank uh, thanks, Eric. Look, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, obviously, we're going to be back for more from Tahoe. Please get on and support Eric's uh, 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 podcast and his blogs. And, uh, mate, thanks for having you on. We'll have you on again. It's been uh, fantastic. Love me some Australians, man. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, man. You have to come Thank down. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.